Hey Bulls fans, Adam Harry here with another Retro Corner review. This time we have the Warhammer Original Edition Mass Combat Fantasy Role Playing Game Box. Um, this was first produced in 1983 by Citadel and Games Workshop and all that fun stuff. So, without further ado, let's crack this box open and see what's inside. So we got it opened up here and as you can see the box is a little beat up, but that's because it's over 30 years old at this point. So, um, this is kind of cool because this box actually came with three different books. So again, Games Workshop doing what they do best, reusing good ideas. Um, that, the first book is the one I'm going to go over today. This is the Warhammer Tabletop Battles book. This is the rule book. Um, over here we've got the uh, volume for Magic. And then the last one of course is for characters and all that fun stuff. So, um, but yeah, let's take a crack at the uh, Warhammer Battles book first. And I've got some fun stuff marked off, so without further ado, let's dive right in. Alright, so we've got the book out here. I've got it all tabbed up to kind of mark where I want to go over here. But as you can see, first off, uh, the cover itself, black, black and white. The uh, entire book itself is all black and white. There's no color. It's about 50 pages long. Um, so it's a relatively small rule book compared to some of the stuff we have today. Um, as you can see here, uh, basic index, copyright 1983, all that fun stuff, Games Workshop. So they dive right into, there's no story, no background yet. Uh, that's actually later on, but they get right into the meat of the game, which is the rules. And it's going to feel very, very familiar to anybody that's played fantasy before. Uh, same basic stuff, moving, shooting, combat, another movement phase, kind of a, a extra phase there um, for moving, uh, magic phase, and then the, the route, 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 routing, run phase. You're scared. That's what that means. So, jumps right in again, movement, it goes over all the basics there. It was very simple, you know, based on the type of troop you were, how far you moved, and then the same with cavalry. Um, moving on from there, uh, it, it kind of goes over the different types of movement. Charging, counter charging was a big thing too. Um, again, this is the different formations and turning. This was a, a game that scaled anywhere from, you know, less than 10 models, so you could have kind of your role-playing aspect of the game, which is why it was the Warhammer role-playing game. So very, you know, small, small skirmish scale or on up to, to mega battles with hundreds of models. So again, different formations and all that fun stuff. Psychology phase, everybody's familiar with that. The, the fear charts, this is actually a lot smaller than what I'm used to uh, when it comes to GW charts. I mean, it's, it's a D6 chart. Um, one and two are bad, four, five, or six, not so bad. And then of course, terror is like fear, but worse. So, and then frenzy, of course. The morale phase, all that fun stuff. Shooting. This is going to seem cool uh, to anybody that has an elf army or an empire army. If you notice here, um, probably can't make it out too well, but the elf bow has the same range as a long bow, except it's stronger. It's the same strength as a crossbow, which also has the same range. So that's kind of cool. Um, the the to hit charts, the wound chart, and all that fun stuff is on the next page. It's very similar. Um, to what we have now with the ballistic skill or bow skill in this case because uh, this is the precursor to all that it's the same basic thing um, take your skill and then compare to the chart it's it's going to be very familiar a bs1 guy is going to hit on a six and a bs10 guy is going to hit on a minus three because in this game there were modifiers um, to, to hit and stuff like that the kill chart or toughness chart they have down here is basically the same you know you have the strength of the attack on the left and the model's toughness on the right um, they didn't use a number system for toughness it was ranked from a through f uh, a being the weakest and f being the strongest as you can see here also anything above a six uh, was his attack strength of the missiles uh, was an instant kill for most things until you got to the E and F part. So again, very, very similar to what we have now. These two charts are the backbone of the system and it hasn't changed a whole lot in almost 30 plus years at this point. So the only thing that's really changed is their numbering system. Again, wounds, all that stuff, very, very familiar. Now we get to the combat section of the game, which is still very familiar to anybody that's played Fantasy or 40k in the past 20-30 years. Uh, this, the turn order is very similar. You have the order of attacks, your throw to hit, throw to kill, or in this case to wound, and if you're more familiar with that. Uh, your saving throw and your combat result. So very, very similar to what we've seen in the previous editions. It's kind of neat that they've kept up with that. So um, this chart is slightly different. If you notice here, uh, if you have equal weapon skills to the person you're fighting, you actually hit on a five instead of a four. So that chart did shift over time. So I did want to call that out. I do think that's kind of neat uh, that it started out being slightly harder to hit. So um, more models on the table for longer, basically. 
throw to kill, basically the throw to wound chart. Uh, same deal there. It's a D6 system, so nothing's changed here. It goes over the different weapon types, and then again the um, um, monster rules for combat, combat results, troops breaking, and then of course the the rally and running phase. And that brings us to the appendix. In the appendix section here, the first time I flipped through this book, I thought, what is this, a college blue book? Is this where I write my answers? Uh, but I was pleasantly surprised. This section actually has alternate rules. Uh, it has your troops, uh, your, your, your sheet that you can fill out for your army. Um, it also has, again, alternate rules, different stuff there. Um, house rules, actually, that the, the GW Studio used, but didn't feel like it was playtest enough to actually include in the main game but just kind of suggestions to kind of go with. But this was probably the coolest part to me. It actually has a special offer in here. And let me pull it up so you guys can see it. If you want, you could tear this page out and mail it into GW, Citadel Miniatures there, and get a free Thorgrim model. So it's for the Ziggurat of Doom adventure. So that's pretty cool. I wish they'd do more stuff like that. Probably encourage people to uh, get the hard copies of stuff more. So anyway, again, not a college pool book, but it's kind of cool anyway. Then we get to the tabletop battle section. So again, this section was not just for the big games, but also for the skirmish games. It actually says right here uh, at the bottom, um, you know, regiments organized in units and regiments, uh, anywhere from five and 50 models. Uh, and it actually says right here, I think this is funny. Um, he's like, I don't recommend, you know, mixing weapons, but uh, you can, it just makes it more complicated. complicated so I never do it. Uh, units of 10 and 24 figures look the nicest. So again, it was more of an aesthetics. Uh, what does this look like and why is it cool to play this game? Kind of a tabletop tips there. What you have here is the fighting and dungeon section. Again, because this is wasn't just designed for massive battles, it was also designed for small skirmish scale role playing elements included. It goes over that, um, you know, torches and doors and all that stuff like that. The darkness uh, in fighting in dungeons is a small band of adventurers. So it's kind of cool that they would they would do that. Uh, here they have flying creatures, which those rules, man, these are so simple. I kind of miss something this simple. Um, I could see why they changed it because honestly, the landing phase, landing part of that is not very fair. You just get the charge off. But hey, you're a flyer, so it makes sense, right? Uh, but they also have the start of the adventure, the Ziggurat of Doom, which is kind of cool. They suggest using, you know, books stacked under a tablecloth or whatever if you want to do this adventure at home. Uh, so just some basic tips there for modeling. But uh, it is a full-on dwarf versus goblin slash hobgoblin slash orc fight on a giant ziggurat. Uh, Thorgrim and his crew have been run down by these orcs and goblins, and they decided, hey, we're going to make our stand right here. So it's a cool little scenario they include there. And there's a picture of said ziggurat of doom and then another picture of Thorgrim up there in the corner so um, he's got stats and special stuff and the uh, the goblin fighting him next up in there is the creatures list and again this is the beastery of the game um, all that fun stuff I've marked a couple things I wanted to call out here hobgoblins haven't seen those guys in a while I really wish they'd bring them back uh, they're basically um, evil or black orcs if that's a possibility but anyway um, they're pretty tough they also include Belrogs so again, 1983 hadn't probably gotten to any lawsuits yet with uh, Tolkien and th those guys, but they definitely had Belrogs in the game. Those are your bloodthirsters, analogs. That's what they become eventually. So pretty cool. Minotaurs are in there as well. Trolls, obviously. This section over here, Manfish. I miss those guys, man. Um, some Sahagin from D&D, but uh, copyright, copywritten, so can't use that word. Anyway, um, also originally in the game. Um, other monsters, you know, demons, ogres, all that fun stuff that you get to fight. A table of different dragons and actually give you percentages on whether they're intelligent, what, what kind of spells they possibly could have, what kind of wizard levels they would have too. Um, all that fun stuff still in the game. Uh, Waverins, Chimeras, Centaurs, the Jabberwocky, this guy's pretty cool. He causes fear, but he also is illuminated. However, if you can see him, um, if you're within 15 inches of him, he causes fear and all that fun stuff. So, got to deal with that. Bring your Snicker stack with you. The final thing I wanted to point out before I uh, get to the very, very end is the giant frog. Um, I was flipping through this and I was kind of talking to Big Red about it. I was like, is this the original slime? Like, what does this mean? It's a giant frog in the game. He just ate people. So uh, maybe he became eventually the slime, but hey, who, who knows? But anyway, that's the final thing I wanted to go over, really. Um, they do have rules for uh, where people... <laughs> 
and also the undead, liches, ghosts, zombies, mummies, all that fun stuff. But that's pretty much it for this review. Um, if you like it, go ahead and give us a like. If you want to see more of these, let me know. Come back next week and I'll go over the magic section of this of this awesome box set. Again, that's the Warhammer Mass Combat Fantasy Role Playing Game. Um, retro Corner Review brought to you by Bulls. And this is Adam Harry signing off. Have a good one.